What's going on guys? Zed here, bringing you my first Marvel Midnight Suns Let's Play. We are doing it while streaming, so there will be downtime in between the games. But I've had some inquiries about doing a Let's Play series because some people can't catch the streams or they want they want to watch it on their own time, things like that. I totally get it, so here it is, we're going to do it. Um, some criterias for this run is I'm going to be using no combat items because, well, yeah. I'm only going to use the Hunter on side missions if a Fallen appears. This is just to get the run going. I don't want to be stuck, you know, for two hours on a mission if I can help it. And then it'll also be a speed run as always, so no side mission farming. Um, basically, it'll be 21 story missions and 18 side missions approximately, so about 40 in-game days to, to beat the game. And I'm going to do an episode... Or I may not do an episode per mission, but maybe an episode every two missions or every three. We'll we'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this will be the first of, of many. I'm not sure how many episodes it'll be, but essentially the idea here is I'm going to explain what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. Um, not only for you guys on YouTube, but also the guys in chat on Twitch. So like I said, there might be downtime. Um, I'll crop out as much as I can, but I'm not going to go foolproof detail editing so I apologize. But with that said, fresh run, ultimate three, new game plus. Sanctum Symbiotum is our first mission. And let's get to it. <laughs> Nobody uses combat items if you're listening, devs. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's true, actually. So, <clears throat> basically, the very, very first thing you want to do when you load up any mission is you want to do a threat assessment. You want to look at who's the biggest target or rather most threatening target. Who are they targeting? Who on your team is most at risk of dying, if anybody? And what cards do you have in your hand to deal with this problem? Right. So, for example, we look at the screen right now. I'm seeing uh, two targets on Hunter, two targets on Blade and two targets on Strange. Now, of course, being the Hunter, she does have higher base stats than the other ca characters anyway, and being New Game Plus, her stats are a little inflated for this first, these first couple missions, um, at least for me. And so we don't really, we're not too concerned about her taking damage, but even on a New Game, she does have slightly higher base stats anyhow. <clears throat> and then in terms of the, my hand, we've got, how do we have? I hear a combo, which is useless to us. Double strike, which we don't want. Agamotto's gaze is nice to have, quick because it sets up plays. Quick strike is nice to have, because quick strike. And Axe of Angrimus is nice to have. So I'm not particularly upset about this hand, but what does upset me is no hunter cards. The reason this upsets me is because the hunter cards are quite powerful. And it's... Yeah, it is what it is. <clears throat> You use the draw two item. That's fair. I mean, yeah, when I used items, I used the draw two. But and the cure until I realized you could get cure on move. I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, for quite some time. Now, being the first mission, it's not particularly challenging uh, compared to later game stuff. But the concepts still apply. The rules are still the same. Especially on Ultimate 3, where characters are healthier, uh, tankier, they do more damage. So even though Blade is only being targeted by two people, realistically, he can only take about four hits, right? Four or five, approximately. And Doctor Strange, same thing. Now, based on this composition and this situation, the targets targeting Doctor Strange are our biggest threat. The reason for that is he doesn't have any healing or self-sustain built into his commons. So we don't want him to take damage if we can help it. However, we do have heal, two copies of heal on Hunter, as this is just um, <clears throat> sort of a, a fresh thing. Yes, exactly. So having hero combos right away is actually awkward. I actually don't like them because they make the deck size uh, 26 as opposed to 24. Uh, so it's actually crappy. Yes, they are a lot of damage, but it's hard to generate, generate that heroism. Uh, you're right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take out these Doctor Strange targets. We have a quick in the hand and two strikes. This won't be an issue. And then uh, the Hunter targets are less important, although the Officer is our biggest threat. So we want to try to maybe stun him or kill him in one turn. The only way we'd be able to kill him in one turn is if we used, say, you know, 
two skills in a hero combo, but even then it's not going to work. <clears throat> so based off that information, we're going to just dump hero combo, get something a little better. I don't want two copies of Agamotto's Gaze, so we're going to dump the second one. There we go. So that'll be good to set up for next turn. And because the heal is in our hand, we're less concerned about taking damage now. Now because we don't have the shove upgrade yet, we are not really going to be able to to get this officer into the stun box, which is why I was saying I'm upset that there's no hunter cards in this hand, because it would have been nice to draw a slash, but alas, we have no slash. Now because of that, we're going to use Quick Strike Strike and probably Agamotto's Gaze, so... Let's deal with the Doctor Strange targets first, as we said. However, we can throw this at one of these targets, so I'm less inclined to target this guy. We have the Quick over here, so realistically, let's play the Agamotto's Gaze. The other thing is I don't actually want to redraw the Quick. Um, I'd rather have less cards. You could play Quick and then Agamotto's Gaze and then Quick again, but we don't need to, and we might as well make this a little bit more difficult, a little bit. <laughs> so we'll use the quick. Let's do this. Ba -ba -da -ba. So now the idea here is now we have the heroism, right, to throw the box if you want to. So this is an option that you have, or you could always try to line this up, or you could try to get another heroism and use this. It doesn't really matter, but these concepts are still applicable right so because this is here it means that we don't really have to worry about one of these two minions and this is something you want to keep in mind in general um so axe of anger is it has a weaken on it this makes me inclined to use it yeah so the strange targets will go down let's clean up the blade targets because again we don't really care about the hunter targets Now, the decision is either we uh, line up and push this guy into this stun box, which is quite tempting, and the reason for that is we still have a full card play via strike, and it would prevent the damage from being applied to Blade in the first place, or the option is to use Axe of Angerumas to mitigate damage Blade takes, or Hunter takes and use it on the Officer. This is a pretty appealing play because it's, it's the weekend and it is an Officer, however, I am more inclined to save the Axe of Angerumus and get up to get it enhanced just to do that little bit extra damage to the officer personally, but you could take this any way you want. Just a preference thing uh, at, at that point. So for me, I'm inclined to double strike this target, move, and then push him into the stun. Ah, oh, we applied the bleed with Blade's passive there. That was super lucky, super awesome. So now he should die, I believe. Should. <clears throat> I can't remember how much extra damage the stun box applies at this stage in the game. I hope this is one of the stronger arms. We did come all the way here for a fight. Hey, I'm just going to see if I can maybe clip both these guys, because it looks like that may be a possibility. I didn't think we'd have the angle for that. No, not quite. Okay, that's fine. No problem. Yeah, perfect. So the blade, the bleed is doing ten, which is the coefficient of blades' uh, offense. So we can't check that right now easily. But the way you can just know how much damage you're gonna do is just mouse over the enemy, and it says bleeding and how much damage they take. And now you know. Two heroism left. We could. Mm, nope, we can't use it. Never mind. And so we'll just pass. So that's your long-winded way of basically explaining. Target prioritization, 
why it matters who you start attacking and when to when to just sort of let things go. Uh, realistically, though, you could do that any which way you want, and at this stage in the game, it doesn't really matter. But I think it's important to practice the fundamentals. Optimally, I would have played Quick Strike and then um, uh, Agamotto's gaze, but you know, want to acknowledge these different things. So, like, was that more optimal? Yes, but this is what you could have done otherwise. So three reinforcements come in. These don't really matter. There's all our hunter cards that we were looking for before. Um, you could heal here, although we don't need to because we'll just be able to kill all these guys anyway. But it's on the table. So... Okay, we'll start with our quicks, which is usually what you want to do. Not always. And, but in this case, I'm not really going to be able to use them in any other way, because if you look at the damage of Axe Angaroom is 30, right? This character is 45. So unfortunately, I'm unable to go Axe of Angaroomus into Quick Slash for a kill, because Quick Slash being only 14 damage, not quite enough, right? Which is, uh, it is what it is. Now, what you want to try to do as well is look to see if you can set up any sort of environmentals so for example if if i was to move you know if i say quick slash this guy i want to identify that oh okay hunter ends right there right here so if there was an enemy over by the stun box that would be a good lineup but since there's no way i can manipulate hunter's location uh it doesn't really matter in this situation but it definitely will uh, later in the run Again, normally we wouldn't care about the hunter taking hits, however, she is currently vulnerable from the officer, so we are a little concerned for her for her health, and so we will take out this guy. Weak, even for Hydra. Uh, now at this stage in the game, we don't have shove as I've said already, so I'm not too concerned about setting up slash, but later when we get shove, you'll see me more concerned about positioning for, for slash. But for now, it doesn't really matter. Now, in terms of redraws, I do not see myself using Stake because I want to use the Axe of Angarumus uh, Heroism, right? So let's get rid of Stake. Okay, Hero Combo is not bad. It's a nice chunky hit. and But again, a little expensive at this stage. Make and Bleed is good here because it'll allow us to sort of spread out Bleed with, with Strike. Maybe we draw into a Quick Strike to take out this guy. So let's do that. We don't want steak, but if we get it, good. it is what it is. Okay. <laughs> mm, you love to see it. You love. You really do. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> Why am I a vegan? No. <laughs> no. That's funny. <laughs> All right. So there's a few ways you can take this, right? Number one is you could either heal Hunter and then just do damage to Officer, or you can weaken Officer and then continue attacking with other things. I'm inclined to just weaken the Officer because I'm at 10 heroism, so I want to use it rather than over capping it. It's inefficient, so we're gonna weaken him. Definitely not, not a vegan. <laughs> Just don't screw up our time. Okay, so now we have one card play left, and we will take out this extra unit here if we can. Um, so there's a few ways we can do that. So if you try to slash, for example, you'll notice that Doctor Strange is in the way, right? So we can use this vault, we could just use stake on him, we could target him with slash. Um, I'm inclined to use the vault given that we have excess heroism and it's not being committed anywhere, right? So this is just one of the ways to deal with this. It's remarkable how well Hydra manages to attract Normally I would advise against using environmental vaults on a minion, but in this situation it doesn't really matter. 
Okay, so with my one play left, I can use stake and apply bleed to somebody, or I can boot these guys for big damage on both. The choice isn't too difficult, so I would slash if I want the double damage, but since we can set that up next turn, but stake this turn will apply um, uh, bleed. It's more efficient for me to use it this turn rather than next turn, so let's do that. Okay, so we have Hunter at about half health, and we want to have we want to be a little healthier for the second part of this mission, which is the Venom fight, which is a relatively solved mission, which I'll talk about. And so I want to keep Whip in my hand, and that will become apparently obvious very quickly. Um, double heal is not really great because we want to try to you know finish off these guys in the next turn or two. Bleed we can see is doing 12 damage, so we just have to do a little bit. Vishanti is not great uh, at any point, and it's definitely not great this turn, so we'll dump that. Okay, so that's two whips. I am inclined to actually keep both, uh, because they are currently costing me a lot, and I do need them on the next half of the mission. So let's top up our hunter. Okay. And now Axe of Angerimus is buffed, and it's crit, so two for one <clears throat> in that respect. We can quite simply stun this guy so he doesn't attack. We can either kill him or we can kill Officer and, and not rely on the bleed. And I'm more inclined to do that so that Doctor Strange doesn't get hit again. That way the following turn we're able to use heal and then... Uh, finish off the Hydra Elite with one of any cards that we have. And since Heroism does not carry over to the second half of story missions, we're good to go. And before you transition to the next part of a story mission, you want to try to set up your hand as much as you can, which is why I'm saying I actually want to hang on to both whips, because I know for a fact that they will be very, very useful and in trivializing the fight. And you also want to try to optimize your experience when you can. And so so set up your hand, optimize XP, and understand that you go into the next fight with buffs. So for example, you can see Blade has three stacks of Make and Bleed. So we're not going to use a, a move if we can. So we're going to use Heal on Strange, top him up. Okay, so 17 damage, we can do that with Slash, we could do that with maybe with Winds of Watum, I'm not sure. Nope, not quite. So we want Blade to keep those stacks, like I said. So let's redraw a quick strike here. Another, <laughs> okay, another Axe of Anger Rumors, that's funny. Um, so to optimize our card plays and get the most value out of our team, give them the most amount of XP possible. It's best if we do Axe into Slash. That way both these units get some XP. So that's what we're going to do. Again, these are just fundamental things that should just become second nature. So you're going to have three stun boxes on the right, one stun box on the left. You want to push Venom over to the right side. Well, that certainly escalated quickly. Do I even want to know what that beast is? <clears throat> it calls itself so, I'm just going to wait for the subtitles to finish. Oh, Blade doesn't keep the stacks in this case. That's interesting. Often you'll keep, like, resist... So I get interesting. I guess not make complete. My apologies. Okay. It could just be this mission too. So, uh, we see Venom with four minions. Four minions, not too hard to deal with. We have a Winds of Watum in hand. 
The steak we don't need and we don't even want because we're going to be using our whip. So let's dump that. Hero combo we don't want, same reasons. Quick strike, okay, cool. So quick strike is good. And so the way the way you want to do this is you want to push Venom into box number one, box number two, and then box number three. You want to you want to win by the time he's in box number three or the turn following, okay? Because if you do that, if you stun him constantly, he only gets one action. If you use Whip to do it or Winds of Watum, he never procs Symbiote skin. Honestly. Many times you go through this mission, or the many times I've gone through this mission, he often just does just the ranged attack, which does basically no damage. Or if you're clumped up, he'll do his explosion, but it doesn't matter because you just yeet him into the stun, and you're good to go. So, let's start with, we're going to use Quick Strike on this guy, and we're going to win what team these two guys. We're going to blow the barrel to kill this guy, and then we're going to whip Venom into here, eventually, depending on what we see and what we, what we pull. So let's do that. So one. I haven't felt this good in years. Two. That was really something. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's the ranged attack is hilariously bad. I don't know why. <clears throat> We're gonna use make and bleed here just to get a little more heroism. This way it sets up um, Axe of Angerumus and Whip and the Barrel. So you can see here, right, Axe costs me four, Whip costs me one. I have six Heroism and I would like to blow up this Barrel. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to Axe first, then Barrel, then Whip. And the reason we're going to Axe first is because he currently doesn't have Symbiote Skin. And we're using the axe mostly, not mostly, almost exclusively for damage, uh, not really for anything else. Okay, and we're going to blow the barrel because if we throw him into the stun and the barrel hits him, then I am sad. So we're also going to see if I can spread out. So we, I mean, I don't really care if he does the uh, AoE or the ranged attack, but let's, it's just a good habit to not be clumped up like this against units with AoE attacks. Now, if you want him to use that AoE attack, you're welcome to, you know, but for argument's sake, it's usually best not to, usually. Like, if you're versing, say, Dread Maidens, right, you want to try to spread out if you're versing um, units with any kind of knockback, which he does have, then he may do it as well. So there's a chance he picks up Strange and just yeets him into Blade, right? So we, we just want to try our best to attempt to mitigate these things. Um, now, it may not always work, of course, but you want to try. So if Strange blows it up, that's where he goes. If Blade blows it up, that's where he goes. So Strange is going to be marginally better to do this. Obviously, if you had Spider-Man, you would use Spider-Man for your heroics. Obviously, we do not. So again, to optimize, we're going to try to push him as close as we can to to this stun box without using that stun box. And you know it's the breakpoint because it has like this little movement. But just to err on the side of caution, we'll make sure the lightning bolt is directly over top of the box. Like so. Now, in the situation where the whip discards the whip... Okay. Perfect. In this situation, we know, because it has been discarded, we know that we are now more likely to draw the other cards in our deck. And given we've already used a couple quicks, we've already used Make and Bleed, we've already used a Whip, I am very likely to draw into either a Slash or... a Slash or a Heal next turn for Hunter. And then the redraws thereafter will be more inclined to draw a slash as well. So it's very unlikely we pull whip uh, just because of how the math works and how decks work. So we discard the whip. It's more than likely we pull slash or heal. Heal will allow us to redraw. Slash will be useful to push him into the next box. And we'll go from there. 
Yeah, so there you go. There's the ranged attack, right? He'll try to throw you into any sort of threat. In this case, he yeeted me into the barrel. No problem. Okay. So, yep, there's our heal. There's our slash. <laughs> um, almost like he's done this before. So, <clears throat> we have two minions over here, which we could deal with with, you know, environmentals. We could use strike. Uh, this barrel here will take out this minion, so I'm inclined to do that. And now, if I use Agamotto's Gaze, it's going to give us Winds of Watum and a Quick Strike. And we know that because those are the last two attacks that I played. So, I am inclined to do that, which will allow me to redraw this Quick Strike, take out these minions for free, take out this guy for free, not spend heroism on the barrel, and then so on and so forth. So, we're going to open with Akamoto's. Okay, so we have two quick strikes in hand. I'm less concerned about the bleed application, to be quite frank with you. And so we'll take out this guy with Winds of Watum. Oh, you know, I'll be honest, I just assumed Venom was in the radius. I didn't even check. Uh, that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh well, it's fine. Now we're not really going to get a chance to use the uh, other bleed stack unless I interrupt this flow of play, which yeah, we could do. Uh, we may do. So we don't need the heal here, so let's redraw that. Another Winds of Watum. Okay, cool. So we'll use this instead. Reason being is uh, it will maintain the make and bleed stack for now. And so from this position, now we can redraw a quick strike and not think about it. Okay, we drew our second heal. That's fine. Now, unfortunately, Slash, yeah, Slash does not have the range to shove into, or sorry, to push into the stun. And that's because he decided to chase after us. Kind of sucks. Is what it is. Nothing I could do about it. So unfortunately, we are going to have to take a little bit of a different approach. Not the end of the world. And so we will actually apply the bleed. Uh, as we won't be able to stun him. So we might as well op optimize our damage. Now he does have symbiote skin. You can take advantage of this if there's a character you're concerned about. Because if you attack Venom with that character when he has symbiote skin, they'll get bound. And enemy units will not attack bound units. So for example... If Hunter was almost dead, let's say, um, and I was like, oh, I don't want her to die, right? You could just attack him, and then she'd be good to go for when you are ready for her. So that, that is an option if you if you so choose. We don't need that, but still. So, speaking of, and for argument's sake, I am going to... I'm going to use Make and Bleed because I don't want to proc the Symbiote skin with anything. And the only options I have are going to do just that. Make and Bleed will also thin the deck slightly, as well as give us a Bleed application stack. So that's what we're going to do. Now what we do have is this here. So what you could do is if I say I did this, right? And I push him over here and then I slash him over here. That is definitely an option. Um, but I, did, I wouldn't have the angle, right? Because it just pushes him too far. And then because I had to move to get this angle, I wouldn't have the angle to slash him. So it's definitely in the cards if if the angles were slightly different. But alas, they are not. I'm just going to see if I can get him into that water tower. No. Okay, so we'll just move him a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, Venom is not a particularly difficult fight, that's for sure.
Okay, so what you could do is you could have started with that play I just did, then use Slash, but then it would reactivate Symbiote Skin, you know, all these things. So that's just the way that I wanted to do it and to get the bleed ready to go. But honestly, again, you could take that any which way you want. It's not one way to do it. So again, if we play Agamotto's Gaze, we are going to pull, in this case, we're going to pull, I believe it's a Strike and a Winds of Watum. Winds of Watum would clear Blade, which would allow us to use that Blade, or sorry, that Bleed, and then use uh, Strike. But I don't actually want to draw into Blade cards, so I'm going to use my redraws now before we do that. And so if you have a character who's bound or dazed or stunned or like hard CC'd and you use your redraws, you are very, very, very unlikely to draw their cards. And I don't actually want blade cards right now. Hence the deliberate use of redraw before using Agamotto's and Winds of Wotuming it, etc. Or, or whatever I decide to do. And then we get rid of this one because we already have one. That's a bummer. It is what it is. Now in this case, I am going to actually use wins um, a little bit differently. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's cleanse the bind. You are lucky to still be breathing. Oops. We're going to move Strange at just a... It doesn't really matter, but we'll move him at, say, this angle. So recall that if you use a knockback quick on a healthy target and they bump into a minion, that does still proc the quick. Or if they bump into an environmental, it explodes and then it kills a minion, that also counts for quick. These are important to keep in mind. So because we drew the blessing of the Vishanti, we might as well just have some fun and use it. As it will buff the damage of Strike. Making Strike not entirely a meme. Uh... <laughs> So there we go. Now we can push him into our second stun box. But before we do that, I'd like to apply strike on him first. And then... But we're going to see... Okay. Mm. So if I use the quick here, because Hunter lands here, it's possible that the character models kind of shift around in a really crappy way to where we can't uh, push him into the stun. This is possible. Um, well, let's see. Let's see what happens. I hope that this is not the case. Okay, see? So th this is a good demonstration. This is what you don't want to have happen because now <laughs> because now I can't I can't do the thing, right? So that was exactly what I was hoping didn't happen, but at the same time I hope it did happen so I, you know now it's something to keep in mind. Because that sucks, right? That sucks. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> okay.
Bang. Okay, symbiote skin again. And since we don't really need to do anything else, we and I don't want to activate the symbiote skin, again, just sort of a something to keep in mind. Sometimes it helps you, sometimes it doesn't. Entirely depends on the situation. We might as well top up Strange and get the card out of our hand, because right now heal is just a dead card. And then move on. So a little unlucky, right? We, we still haven't seen our second whip. He moved when we moved into his AoE. Uh, which again is something you do want to keep in mind and so we were we were unable to stun him again we were unable to control him again and uh, yeah these are all things that do add up over time so you can see the repercussions of of not or of, of making those little mistakes or or having those little things happen to you right I mean it's not the end of the world but it's worth pointing out so Hunter is stunned this turn. There's a few things we could do. We could either um, knock him back into Hunter, which would break the stun, actually, or we just wait a turn. It doesn't really matter if we use Hunter or if we keep her, honestly. Hero combo, I'm just going to dump it, assuming that you, know, you may not have hero combos when you do this mission or you start out, so I'm just going to try to avoid using them for this one. And then let's see what we get. So we have quick strikes. We've got make them bleed. We have so this is a big, uh, you know, blade turn. The dream would be to draw into stake, but it may not happen. Now I am inclined to wake up, <laughs> uh, wake up hunter, so that she can move and then slash him into the box, right? Because that's what we have. So let's do that. There we go. Note that that does not work with dazed. It only works with stun. So now if we redraw, we could draw into things like whip or uh, another slash, etc. Okay, sweet. So Axe of Angerimus is a nice draw here. It's a good, um, uh, it's a good heroism sink, if you will. So we'll just play that. Don't have to think about that one too much. Okay, so symbiote skin. Because we have uh, two quicks in hand, we actually don't really care about the symbiote skin. As well, you'll note that when we stun him... Sorry, where's Hunter? Here we are. When you stun him... When you stun him, the symbiote skin doesn't proc. Now, this is true for many, many things, like counter. If you stun them, it doesn't counter. Or, um, like, frenzy, right? It eats the frenzy turn. Uh, things like that. If things are going to happen and you stun them, there's a very high chance that, that those things just don't happen. Now, he is taking 16 damage next turn, which puts him at 15 damage for game. And so if we do 15 damage to Venom and pass, we do win. And so... <clears throat> but out of good sort of player habits, we can finish these guys off. We'll leave the... I don't know. Let's say let's leave the Hunter minion alive. and Because you want to try to win as, as fast as you can, right? So let's go quick. And then we're quick. They cannot possibly match your strength. And then if we attack him, it does break the stun, but it does also mean that we win, so it's on. Okay. 
so, you know, little things to keep in mind with the mission that I was able to kind of showcase, right? Like what happens if you move into an enemy hitbox? What happens if you don't stun him three turns in a row, right? He starts to actually control the pace of the game. And so it's important to, to stay on top of these little things or it can very easily get out of control later in the game. So you want to try to work on these fundamentals now while it matters and not make those mistakes that I was making and not do, you know, those positional errors such as stepping in a hitbox. It's just important. So there you go. That's the first mission. Oh, 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 <laughs> I mean, I like these options better, but <laughs> would have been nice to have been right. Hunter, when you have a minute, come meet me in the yard. Of those three, we'll take quick strike because Hunter? turning it into a knockback quick uh, right off the get go is just far more valuable than the other two. So. Okay, nice. Surely exploded otherwise after your display, Carol. Learned it by watching you, Bruce. <laughs> All right. So, for this mission, for this mission, basically, you always get minions lined up here, almost always. And so, if you happen to draw a photon beam, this is a really high value beam at this stage in the game because it's targeting four minions and a mainline unit. Because if you look, that means you only have to take out one extra minion, which is usually over here, or sometimes he's over here by the barrel. Um, but these, you'll get at least three or four in a line right here every single time without fail. Literally. And so... That's something you want to keep out, f keep an eye out for on Faustian Bargain, which is technically a story mission, but like it's still we're still scripted right now. So basically, for me, we don't want steak. We don't really. Want, I mean, the hero combo is good with Marvel, but we're not really going to be able to use it anytime soon. So let's just dump these two expensive cards and hope that we draw a photon beam. Dang, no photon beam. Feels bad. All good. So looking at this, the biggest threats are these two full full regular units, I should say. Regular units targeting Marvel. They are threatening because they're not minions, so they're going to do a pretty hefty chunk of damage to her. And so I am inclined to maybe use both knee strikes this turn just to try to absorb as, or rather mitigate as much of that as I can. There's a barrel over here which will deal with these two minions. And then we could always use our quick slash and our whip maybe to clean up these guys. This barrel reaches this one minion barely so that's an option as well. We could maybe meme and try to whip this guy into the drop. There are one, two, three. Yeah, three stun crates behind me. These are not in very useful locations. However, this guy is pretty close to this one, so perhaps we can do something there with maybe move into um, Fist of Radiance if it reaches. I don't think it does. Or we can always whip him into here, which is definitely on the table. Something I do consider. And then go from there. So let's start with the Quick Slash. And then we'll use the one, uh, the one heroism that we got, <clears throat> and we'll blow up this barrel. The only question is just simply, who do we do it with? And I think just looking at it, I'd like to do it with, I guess, Blade or Marvel. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, nice. Okay. 
So I guess in that sense it matters. <laughs> Her passive just happens so rarely I often forget about it. Okay, so again, this barrel destroys this minion. We still have three card plays on deck, which is awesome. There is an argument to maybe use heal for heroism, but we're not going to do that. Instead, we're just going to knee strike uh, and go from there. Clean up this guy. And then let's just do extra damage to this guy because I am inclined to probably whip him into the box. Let's see if it reaches. Yeah, not quite. Not quite. So there we go. Not the best uh, opening gambit, right? Like I said, you on this mission specifically, you really want a photon beam. Like you're you are praying you get a photon beam, but it is what it is. It's it's uh, it's all good. Just means this will take an extra turn than it should. Wrecked. Did someone feel a breeze? And the idea too is you want Captain Marvel in binary before you get to the second half of the mission. And that is because you encounter your first shield guard on the second half of the mission. And he is quite beefy. And see, there's another photon beam line. You'll notice that this mission gives you photon beam lines on purpose. It, it, it is like by design. So... Now we want Marvel to go binary, like I said. Photon Beam will do that for us. However, it will also taunt both these guys. So we kind of want to mitigate that. We kind of want to to not <laughs> do that. Okay, yeah, so not, not a great hand, I, I will say, for the situation at hand, at least. Now what we can do though is we can try to kill one or the yeah one of these two guys already. That way the the taunt is a little less a little less impactful and we don't have to deal with it quite as much. So let's target this guy. Okay, so 24 health, photon beam. If she was in binary, it would of course kill, but we don't we don't have a means of, of, of generating binary. However, what we do have is this little box right here, and it would then put him into quick range, or if we use photon beam, um, or yeah, we don't have a way to use photon beam and then quick slash, unfortunately, but that's okay. No matter. No matter. Oh. Audio bug. Hey, <laughs> we love those. We love those. We love it. Okay, so let's be because Marvel's not really going to be able to last, uh, we could heal her. And it would give, or yeah, and it gives us enough for photon beam. But we're also going to use quick slash here because it is a knockback, it is a quick, and it will allow us to just sort of finish off one of these guys uh, with no issue. Okay, so that's two heroism. So now we can use slash instead of heal. Which is quite good because we're going to take Marvel. We're going to put her in a range where um, it 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 lines us up here for for photon beam. About here, I would say, give or take. 
And then, and then we're going to slash him into Marvel because even though she takes a little bit of damage, it will allow us to um, set, set him up for the kill. Now, this is a little annoying. <laughs> Okay, there we go. So we should be good. Sometimes the, the boop can be a little wonky. But yeah, we are good. Unfortunately, it does not kill. Um, but that's okay. She should be fine. Because what we'll do is we'll... Maybe get our passive here? There's the guy behind us that we stunned as well, right? So I was really hoping to set up this, the kill on this guy. That's unfortunate. We did get the counter, which is also awesome. So yeah, we do have to use binary, which is unfortunate, or else we could die. It also means that we might lose binary, which sucks as well. Is what it is. It'll be more enjoyable, more entertaining if I don't have binary for the second part, to be completely honest. Okay, he was definitely targeting uh, Captain Marvel on my screen. Okay, we take those. He 100% was targeting Marvel. <laughs> we'll take it. I'm cool with that. Alright, so we'll top off our girl here. And we can now finish off the rest of the... Uh, rest of the units here, no problem. So you can see we have quick for this guy, we have the barrel for these two, we have fist of radiance, which just does a ton of damage anyway. So yeah, well quick. Again, try to set up your hand for the following section, if you can. That is kind of what you're going for. Um, now, I do actually want this hero combo. The issue is, I don't know if I'm going to get the skill cards to use it, right? So we are going to dump this. Even though I do want it, I do like it, and it was crit, we may not get what we need, right? Now, we could use Fist of Radiance, but because we'll just end the game with Strike and Stake, and I don't actually want either of these cards right off the rip, we're going to use Strike and Stake. So let's do that. Strike... And, but I do want Fist of Radiance and Whip, so we're not going to use our second redraw there. Okay, so the spawns on the second half are not as scripted as the first half. However, you'll always get one or two units on this side of the drop, right? So the right side in this case. You will always get the shield guard over here, and you'll always get one person around this pallet, and then the rest will be somewhere over here. So pretty much majority of the room is on this third of the map. One shield guard and one guy are on this third of the map, and there's always at least one guy on the right side of this line over here. Now... We have two copies of One Step Ahead in our hand. This is obviously not very good because, well, they're counterintuitive to each other because of how the card works. So we're going to dump one of those. Two make them bleeds are not bad to have in your hand because that way you don't make them bleed uh, draw into another, <laughs> another one. Now, if we look at the aggro, we have... The shield guard targeting Marvel, and then we have the two minions targeting Marvel. But unfortunately, she has very low block, and it's, you know, the odds of us pulling enough knee strikes to absorb all of the dazed hits, or sorry, the shield guard hits are very unlikely. That said, we can try. Okay, nice. 
we crit on our slash there. That's that's very nice. So a few things jump out at me. Um, we have a lot of environmentals to play with and a lot of minions around them. We have this guy here. I thought maybe I could boop him here, but yeah, it's too far. We can always boop him underneath this and then drop this down for 40 damage, which would uh, see 40 plus 23 is 63. So we'd be five damage off of a kill, which we could get with strike. So that's an option. Um, we could we could one step ahead to use Fist of Radiance and maybe just do a full Marvel turn. That that speaks to me. Um, these minions here, not so concerning. Like all these units can attack Hunter, and I don't really care. Not really. Uh, we'll probably draw into our second heal again next turn after redraws. Again, just based on statistics. So yeah, let's maybe start with one step ahead to see if we can pull up some knee strikes. Okay, that's one, so that's better than none. Now we have no quicks in hand, which is actually quite unfortunate. So instead, we're going to try to use these environmentals a little more uh, this turn. But we do have knee strike. So we got to take care of these guys. And uh, let's maybe use... Strike to do it. Just to... I mean, honestly... We could do it just to get the strike out of our hand, but we can also use a heroism to take out that one guy. So I'm more inclined to strike these two guys and then uh, make this go kaboom. So let's maybe just start there. There we go. So now every unit that's alive is targeting uh, Hunter, except the Shield Guard, which again, there's really nothing I can do about that right now. We have one card play left and two Heroism, so I am inclined to use that on on Fist of Radiance. However, if I knee strike, there is a chance at this stage in the game where we could absorb his hit. There is a chance. So I say we take that chance. Not a problem. Maybe you should teach me that one. Okay. And now we'll look at and assess like, okay, what are the efficient ways that I can use my heroism here, if any? And one of the things that speaks to me is we can box this guy, we could vault this guy. Um, so let's just maybe do that. doesn't really matter who you do these things with. Again, at this stage in the game, you can be a lot more lenient with little things. Um, eventually, you can just be lenient with the little things anyway, but while you're learning and while you're improving, it's better to be pretty disciplined. So again, like you'd consider all the ending positions, the setup positions, where would you draw enemies, where do you get knocked back? But for now, I don't really care. And we'll save one heroism because we have whip in hand. So I want to be able to maybe open with whip and just have that be an option. Okay. Okay, nice. So we do actually maintain binary unless that was perfect. Perfect number. But I think we have two armor or two block. One. <laughs> nice. So she is dazed for two turn or two card plays, which is a little crappy, um, but that's okay. So let's assess. Let's see who's targeting Marvel. Uh, there are three minions targeting Marvel, which is fine. So we could vault on one. We could use our slash on one. We want to try to get heal if we can. Although, not the end of the world. Quick Strike is good. 
Yeah, quick strike is good. Let's get that out of the way and back in rotation. Quick slash is great. That's that's fantastic. It's fantastic because it'll allow us to deal with both these minions if we want to do it that way or this minion and this guy if we want to do it that way. Although my plan for these guys is to either strike or whip them. So let's do this. Oop. You are lucky to still be breathing. Okay, and there's our day's removal. We still have three card plays. We have a Fist of Radiance, and now we can finally start to kind of pl plug away at uh, these more healthier enemy types. Okay, so we have this minion which I'd like to deal with. We have uh, this guy targeting hunter and this guy targeting hunter. Again, we didn't pull um, heal, which is is fine, but we do have whip, so I'm going to whip this guy into this stun box so that he just simply doesn't attack. And so let's use strike in order to clean up this minion as well and then just sort of get strike out of our hand um, and move on. Could apply bleed as well. Oh yeah, there we go. So pretty efficient. Oh, so you can see there actually we actually we are able to kill him. And so okay, the reason why that works is you'll notice that the damage number changes depending on how many items they're getting kicked through, right? So you can see those three yellow circles, one, two, three. It's doing additional damage, right? But here one, 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 two. Right, so we're kicking him through this tiny little pole and the wall. Over here, you can see it a little more uh, clearly. Right, we're shooting him through this part of the statue, this part of the statue, and then this pole behind the statue. So this is fantastic. We're just obviously going to go for the kill here. I don't have to think about that one. Okay. So again, you want to try to optimize your moves and where you go and what you do. Uh, however, there's nothing we can do. This barrel doesn't give us any real added value, so I'm just going to pass here and save my one heroism. Something is wrong. To be crystal clear, we won't be able to recreate Faustus's experiment or track potential future variants gamma signatures without okay. So I'd like to actually break the days before we redraw in hopes of pulling the the heal card. Alternatively, we could always just go for the artifact and destroy these guys anyway, uh, which is also pretty pretty tempting. So let's start with the quick strike and a knee strike. So knee strike, or sorry, quick strike. We'll just use against the hunter minion. It's weirdos like these that give people like us a bad reputation. There's no way Hydra's medical plan can cover the beating we're about to put on you. So now we can use our redraws. Okay, wonderful. So we might as well use it. We have it. And actually, because it gives counter, I'm going to wait till the following turn, and I might as well apply bleed first, as we've kind of briefly touched on before. Just to, to get that extra bit of damage, and then that way we can just finish the mission next turn. Again, we don't have to use our move, we don't have to really spend any heroism here, we can just chill with the gameplay itself, so to speak. Excuse me. Ah, these delays can be quite frustrating. Infuriating even. Okay. I suppose by now I'd normally be trying.
tromping through the warehouse hurling the puny truck at the moon. Don't worry, Bruce. I've got a pair of torn thermal pants. So that's the heal we were looking for. We're going to look for another quick slash if we can. If not, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, okay, it doesn't really matter. The only thing that I want to try to do, though, is line up the the jump on this guy. So we'll see if anybody can get that. Marvel. Yeah, not quite. Okay. So we can... Hmm. Yeah, we'll just use our move for it then. That's fine. Hydra's standards have fallen a great deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in lieu of a quick, we'll use our environmental, and it's so dumb that he's still focusing blade, but whatever, potato, potato. Stay close and follow my lead. In our last card play, we'll just recover the artifact. That's that. So now we can blow the barrel now that he... Oh, we don't have any heroism. I was going to say, now that the shield is broken. But that's okay. It's always nice when they explode because it takes up their whole next turn. But we're not going to get that far. Again, we're just going to optimize our XP here. Uh, we just win with Fists of Radiance, but, you know, do what you can. Eh, let's use Photon Beam just to be flashy. There we go. Hori hosts of Hoggoth. Okay. The first thing I would do is probably, or is almost always, the. You know, I really could do just as well without you loitering. Yeah. There. The war games, and then I don't open the first, or rather the second coil. I go for war games, and then that way I get an extra pick, so you get the bonus card. Because if you open it, then you're kind of being inefficient. And then you don't really need the moves that much yet. So uh, we're going to start with the, the Foundry, but either of these is fine, to be honest. Don't really need the moves as much as I want the better coils, and I want the better coil cards sooner than I want the shove. Therefore, more games is the move for me. And then I don't research the coil. Or, rather, I don't open the coil. So, for this mission, it's it's the first sort of scripted side mission, but it is technically a side mission, not a story mission. There is an officer, or rather a... Uh, yeah, an officer and then a bunch of elites. A few minions, but the idea is to destroy the helicopter. So the best way you can do it at this stage in the game is to just kind of once again use Marvel... Um, so you can bring anybody you want to level, anybody you want to sort of push progression on. Um, technically speaking, I'd go with someone who can maybe peel for Marvel so she can just do her thing and maintain binary. Or someone who, like Doctor Strange, who can play Agamotto's gaze in order to give you that extra card play. 
uh, later. If you go, if you're on New Game Plus and you go Spider-Man, then you could always just whip the officer, kill the helicopter, then come back to it because you do have to kill the helicopter, then kill everything else. So realistically, just pick who you want at this point. Um, Marvel and Hunter at this stage in the game, they're pretty complementary to everybody. However, the first sort of character challenge and forced interaction that we're going to have to deal with is uh, the Captain Captain America mission. So that's going to be Hunter, Cap, and Iron Man. So for that reason, I usually elect to go with either Cap or Iron Man on this mission, just so that it basically uh, helps out my early game. Or if you don't want to do that, the mission after this one is going to be uh, the bill comes due or no spider-man i believe let me double check sorry i always get the two mixed up okay yeah spider-man's which is going to have uh, venom chucking the rocks at you right so you kind of want to think ahead you want to plan ahead um personally i'm inclined to choose either cap or iron man or if i'm think if i'm more concerned about the venom mission i would go someone like magic now, because it is a common coil um, and the common cards on magic are kind of ho-hum, right? Like Quick Soul Slash and Soul Blast, they don't really need upgrades. And then uh, Limbo Portal upgraded is is whatever. And then, so, not so great. I like using magic once there starts being rare coils. Cap with upgraded commons is quite good. Tony with upgraded commons is quite good. And then Doctor Strange with upgraded Winds of Watum or Agamotto's Gaze is quite good. So I would choose one of your three main Avengers here uh, if you want to think ahead in your speedrun. Otherwise, honestly, just pick whoever you want. Uh, but I am going to go with Iron Man and hope that we draw a um, Mark Target. This cap space deck is quite good, so even with zero upgrades, you can still make do. Iron Man space deck is okay, but it's a little clunky. Um, it's a little clunky. You want you want to try to to refine it and upgrade a mark target or a quick blast as soon as you can. Okay. Looks like Captain Marvel was right on the All right, so there's our mark target. Which is lovely. So the officer is targeting Hunter. This is fine. Um, Iron Man has a couple targets. So yeah, two Hunter, two Iron Man, two Marvel. This spread is actually quite good. Um, these environmental locations are actually okay. Um, the hand though, the hand is pretty good. Mark target, this or, or right away is awesome. The blast and quick blast is probably where we'll use our redraws. We'll have a pretty good Iron Man turn to be honest with you. Um, Yeah, so iron like this knockback range doesn't work. This knockback range doesn't work. This doesn't work. This doesn't work. So the only way to use quick blasts knockback is going to be this into this, which obviously we're not going to do. So we don't actually have to redraw quick blast. It's not going to do us any favors whatsoever. So we can just use it to to kill the unit. And now in this situation, like I said in the last mission, I'm going to try to to pay attention more to the positioning. So for example, if I go here as Tony, I know that it's going to set up this box, which could theoretically get an instant KO. Now, I do also know that the helicopter is a little bit of a timer, you know, obviously. So we want to keep that in mind as well. And um, yeah, so let's do this. It sets up the potential push out the drop if that's the play we want to go for. And again, the reason we didn't have to use the redraw there is because um, it, there was no knockback to take advantage of. So it doesn't it doesn't matter. 
Now, if we were to redraw Blast, we would be able to potentially um, push this guy out at a higher percentage. We could boop this officer into the helicopter, uh, things like that, right? We could use Whip. Now, given that there's no other quicks in hand, but we do have a mark target, I am inclined to maybe mark target this unit and then uh, Whip and then see if we can just kill him without using the drop. That would be nice. Then there's this unit right here who's targeting Iron Man. I don't really care too much about that. Um, I am interested in seeing if I can find a quick for this guy though, as that would be really, really nice. Uh, however, I'm thinking that there's a good chance we can just maybe kill this guy. And I also want to destroy him because he does have the disable helicopter or delay helicopter card. So, you know, we may need that. This early on, it can be sometimes hard to hit through these health bars in Ultimate 3. And you'll notice that, you know, early game Ultimate 3, you tend to just get a lot of 2-stars because missions take one turn longer than they should. But that's neither here nor there. It is what it is. I wouldn't stress about it too much. I'm going to use Knee Strike here to put Captain Marvel in a better position. Um, and so we might be able to get, again, we might be able to get an instant KO, maybe. It would be nice. So let's go. Oh, we moved him. Right. My bad. So we'll try that first. So let's go here. Uh, where It was somewhere around here, right? Give or take. Yeah. So 49% or we basically just neuter his damage output or his health bar. Now if we do it this way, Fist of Radiance will get the kill and refund our card play. Uh, if we do it this way, then you know there's a chance it doesn't happen and we don't get the kill. So um, it's actually best case scenario for us to do it this way where we're doing as much damage as we can as well as trying to um to or sorry in order to set up fist of radiance to get the kill this, so this is better because it's a guaranteed kill most likely and yeah Here we go. higher chance of killing that's what i'm trying to say <laughs> All right, so we could use Blast for 78. We could use, and let's use the redraw here just to compare. Um, so let's see, is there any way to get the kill here? No, but this does increase it to 88%, so that's quite a hefty number. Or this just straight up kills because he's vulnerable. And so we could spend our heroism or not, or we could even use Whip and then play delay helicopter that is also uh in in the cards literally i'm just gonna compare damage numbers here yeah okay so let's go for the the 88 percent chance i'm confident i think we can get it let's do it there we go Lovely. So I took a little risk there, right? I could have used Fist of Radiance to guarantee that, but we'll take the small risk. Not a big deal. This minion right here, uh, we'll just take him out with Marvel, and then we'll use uh, one of these cards, and we'll redraw the other one, and we'll kind of see where we go from there. So let's use Marvel, clean up this guy. Again, early on, don't feel bad about using vaults against minions. Your environmentals don't do a ton of damage anyway, so just do what do whatever you need to do. Would be the best thing I could I could say to you. All right, let's look at how much damage we have here. So this would be a 42% chance to get yeeted out. Not great, not bad. Or we do this, and that's a good little chunk of damage. Or we do this, which is an even larger chunk of damage. This is the play I'm most leaning towards, to be honest. 
Let's redraw the helicopter. Don't think we need it. Let's redraw the slash. We don't need it. Okay, so <laughs> double fist of radiance. Uh, this makes me want to use the whip just for the damage output since we're not going to lose the fist of radiance bonus. And we'll just maintain a heroism anyway by doing it this way. Um, and then Iron Man can take the hit here. We're doing a chunk of damage to both the helicopter and the officer. This looks really good to me. Look at that. So that was 76 damage points right there. And yeah, there we go. It's a pretty solid first turn. So we have Surgical, but no other Iron Man cards, so I'm more inclined to just redraw this one away. Hunter is unfortunately weakened. I say unfortunate because it does obviously uh, hamper our ability to deal damage. I know, crazy, right? Let's redraw hero combo. It's a little expensive for what we're looking for. Photon beam is definitely not what we're looking for. That is unfortunate. No problem. So. I'm going to see if I can set up a decent Fist of Radiance. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be a nice one without using our move, of course. Okay. So we have three card plays, which means we can put Marvel into binary. Um, yeah, but we won't be able to play after that. We won't have the um, heroism to do so. Unfortunately. So let's do it like this. One... Okay, nice. That's good. That's good because they're targeting us. Um, let's go like this. Let's do it. Not good. Seems like it'd be cheaper just to replace you guys with robots. I bet Tony would cut bosses and heal. Okay. And then we can whip to take out um, this little guy. We could try to go for a ring out here, but yeah, I don't really know about that one. So we'll just play it safe and do this. Now I don't know. Oh, we don't have heroism anyway. Okay. So what we'll do then is we will just spread out a bit. So if he's targeting Marvel, he's going to run here and then somewhere over here. So let's put Iron Man somewhere in this vicinity. To maybe use the phone drop. Oh my gosh, another week? Ah! That's annoying. <laughs> it just slows everything down. Alright, so we have 42 damage photon beam. Uh, we can destroy that helicopter. Stop that chopper. Please. Stop that chopper. Alright, so. We just need to get the actual... Uh, what you call it? The um, heroism to do so. Okay, there we go. Nice. 
let's see if we can pull another quick that would be best case scenario that is also a really really good card to get right now amazing amazing So what we're going to do is we're just going to finish off this minion who's all by his lonesome. We're going to use Mark Target on one of the the target that Photon Beam can kill. We're then going to move Marvel and line up and get a fat Photon Beam. Fat with a capital PH uh, Photon Beam. And it is going to be glorious. Glorious. So yeah, we'll do this. Two photon beams, let's just dump one of those. That works. So now we go Marvel. Oh, Iron Man can actually do a bit of a number on this guy, so let's do... Yeah, let's do that. Too bad I didn't think he was in range of telephone or I would have used mark target on him, but that is neither here nor there. Boom. There it is. Okay. So now the counter will kill the officer, um, which... Yeah, the counter will kill the officer, and then I can kill the helicopter. Bada bing, bada boom. That should keep them grounded. Now let's get everything back to the Abbey for analysis. Such arrogance. Our brave soldiers will never allow you. Oh, shut up already. Take them down. No, we lost the binary. Tragic, he lives. <laughs> that sucks. It sucks because... <laughs> one health. Because now we're not going to get... Or it's we may not get three star because of that extra turn. So that kind of sucks. That's okay. Again, let's just optimize our card plays and XP gain. Good habit to get into if you're not already doing so. So that's some for Marvel. This is some for Hunter. And then Iron Man's now the weakest, but Hunter is almost six. And so when she gets six or seven, Iron Man would bump up to five. So yeah. Oh, I don't have a Hunter card to play. There we go. So yeah, it might be two star because of the one health wonder, but well that's okay. Seems like that's there you go. What's that? Okay, and then obviously we're going to do shove. Obviously. Boundary, yes please. Some upgrades for you. Oh, no blues. Forge. Ew. I don't like these options. I do not like these options at all. But I guess I'll take Quick Strike and then I'll take Inspire for the Essence, if nothing else. You're welcome, Hunter. One blue. Mark like target's great, fortify is great, theory is great, especially this early in the game, actually. Um, yeah, it's a very high damage card this early on. Something we could always cut later.
But I am a big Fortify fan. It is a personal preference of mine. I think we'll take... I think we'll take Fury for now. Just for the early game burst damage. Because it's definitely going to be the way to go. Definitely go with this one almost always because the injury chance only applies for right now and we're not going to need them for a few days anyway. So you might as well get the crit chance in the free common. Thanks, Quick blast, nice. Great, great one. And he didn't get injured. That's a super high roll. Now we don't have the essence to do all these upgrades, unfortunately. Um, combat bonus. Eh. For the credits. Now, I'm inclined to use this on Spider-Man because, hey Hudson, because our next mission is with Spider-Man, so it's nice to just have that bonus. Um, I only ever do sparring if it does give a combat bonus. I don't do it for any other reason. Alternatively, I do like taking magic on the next mission, so could give it to magic as well but since spider-man is required uh we might as well just give it to him you know what they say about practice right all right we'll do this one i lied we'll do this one <laughs> all right so i really like magic here you can run and the reason for that is she is really, really good at clearing out binds. But so is Doctor Strange. And I also like magic because she, in the first half, allows you to shove people into the Hydra Specialist, right? So that's the red unit who has the shock shield. You'll notice that there's always a specialist, on, or, well, story missions are always scripted to a degree. Um, there's always a specialist in the first half, but more importantly than that... There's always those AoEs that of, of Venom chucking sh shit at you. So magic is just like, oh, you wanted to go in there? Got you. You wanted to go into the specialist? Got you. So that's why she's so good on this mission. Now, if you're unsure about that or, you, or you're just really like, nah, bro, I need a tank in my life, then if it's your first playthrough, Marvel's going to be not even available because you sent her on an op. But if you don't send her on an op, she's available. Otherwise, if you're on New Game Plus, I would probably have to suggest, um, I guess, Hulk. But honestly, I would highly suggest Magic on this mission. I promise, so good. And if not Magic, then Doctor Strange. It, it, same, similar logic, and he's just a, a good choice. But Magic all the way here, for sure. No doubt. Alright, so there's our Hydra Specialist we were talking about in the top left. Never used it? Well, you'll see me use it a couple times, I'm sure. Upgraded, it applies marked as well, so that's pretty good. Alright. Really nice of you all to come by and visit the old neighborhood. I'd so, I'll stop for a group selfie, but Eddie might get a little jealous. As a sort of so unfortunate start, all three units are stuck in this AoE, so we have to find some way to get them all out of it, right? And so, whether that's environmentals, or using attacks, or whatever. Now in the case of, if you want to use magic on this mission, it is nice to have the shove tech as your first, because then you can combo limbo portal with shove. But I always elected to go with foundry first, because I like the extra, uh, extra coil choices. So I don't unfortunately have shove portal synergy on this mission, uh, which w is amazing and it would be great, but I value the coils a little more. And so we don't have that unfortunately. Spider-Man, we have no difficulty getting out of this AOE. Hunter, we have no difficulty getting out of this AOE. It's magic who's gonna be a little bit of a pain. So we're probably gonna have to use heroism for her, whether that's, you know, chucking this in him, etc. Now, 
right off the get-go, I can tell you that I would like to use whip and whip the officer into this AoE. I think that that is quite valuable. I think that this specialist's angle is quite poor, but same thing, using whip from here to here would be really good, but this officer is the biggest threat. So we're going to take care of that first. Um, whip is not going to help us right now off the get-go. And let's see here. Yeah, so two minions targeting magic. Officer and this dude targeting... Uh, I was going to say strange. Spider-Man. So let's dump Thwip first. Okay, another quick kick. This is quite good. Uh, this is quite good, actually. Because... This is one right here. So let's just start with that. Get that out of the way. Bang. Okay. And again, we don't have shove. I, I know I keep reiterating that, but it's important. So we're able to sort of manipulate our stuff a bit more. I do have Spider-Man's passive, as you kind of just briefly saw. So my first environmental attack will cost me zero. This is something that I'm kind of keeping in back pocket because you'll notice that this slide costing zero, which means I can go meow and just eat this guy into the stun. Uh, that's quite good. That's probably what we're going to do because it also takes care of this minion here for only two heroism and it conserves the card play. Um, and then we can use our quick kick on this guy here, which again is the plan. So yeah, let's do even better. Let's do this just to do a little more damage onto this guy here. It also moves him ever so slightly to get a better lineup with the stun, as you can see here. So now it's just easy, right? Um, so no issues there. Let's start with that. Now you want to try to deal with your the problems as quickly as possible because when you have to start rescuing the civilians, it's going to get a little a little frustrating quickly. So the more units you can deal with on turn one or stun or whatever, the better. So you can just you rescue the civilian. So that's that. Gather does not particularly intrigue me here unless we wanted to commit to killing this unit here, which it's on the table, though not particularly necessary. Uh, we could always rescue the civilian really early, and that's actually quite tempting for me, uh, to be honest. Because for this mission, you don't have to kill everything. You just have to rescue the two civilians. So rescuing the civilian uh, right off the get-go is very strong. Um, on again on this mission specifically so we can always rescue civilian with magic so let's dump gather okay slash is good slash is good so let's do that yeah let's rescue civilian with magic Yeah, if you keep in mind you don't have to kill on this first half, super easy. You can honestly do the whole thing in two turns, which it, we're kind of shaping up to do here. We had a really good start with good spawns, good spawn RNG, um, etc. So that is super awesome. Truly. Truly, truly awesome. Now I'm just seeing if there was a way to get the kill here. There is not, so that's all good. Not, Not the end of the world at all. I just want to find a way to use both my card plays in a meaningful way um, that at least accomplish something. But it doesn't really look like that that is going to be the case right now. So, and yeah, and unfortunately this doesn't reach any sort of collision box. Uh, so that's a little bit of a bummer. I was actually hoping it was going to reach these blue barricades, but potato, potato, right? So here's what we can do, though. Yeah, 
If we're not able to kill the officer or stun him, then what we are able to do is destroy this unit, which saves magic some health because your health does carry over to the next part. So we can at least save her some trouble. And Spidey, unfortunately, is going to get slapped a little bit, uh, but there's nothing I can do about it. Going into the next phase with a whip is nice, but I'm not afraid to use it here. Okay, and the specialist is going to frenzy somebody. Almost certainly. All right. So let's manipulate our hand a little bit. I feel sorry for them, but there's still civilians trapped here too. Oh, cool. I can hear her too, talking in my head. It's a calm system, the same one I activated. I'm going to play. I have a plan. Right. That was going to be It's always frenzy. Yeah, it is always frenzy. Um so this is a little troublesome because I actually don't want him to swing. So we're just going to play a card and then rescue civilian right away. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to set up the hand, right? So hen hence why I play I have a plan. So now we're able to say like, okay, I want the thwip, I want the chain, I want this, I want that, right? So what I don't want is chain strike because chain strike base is just awful. I don't really need a second limbo portal to be completely honest. Soul blast is nice. We'll keep that. Um, Fury, not so much. Second spider sense, no. Quick slash. Okay, so we have to still play something to even get our heroism here. So um, we will use the unbuffed quick slash first. Oh, I didn't even realize. There we go. I'll we'll just be optimal. Oh my gosh. Okay, there. I was gonna. So, this happens sometimes where you get a targeting bug. It super sucks when that happens, but this this works. Ooh, the game had a heart attack. It didn't know what to do there. <laughs> Alright, so then we take magic and we rescue civilian. Okay, you do have to defeat the rest of the enemy. Okay, my bad. I could have sworn you didn't. They will be the next to fall. Well, my mistake. Wow. Doesn't matter. Doesn't really matter. And it doesn't matter because you'll see this guy isn't attacking and this guy's not going to attack so the the spider-man vulnerability doesn't matter and only one turn of the magic vulnerability matters so it works out in our favor my bad my bad so this now i get to do kind of what i was talking about um now he would swing which is concerning if I do portal blast so we're not going to do portal blast this turn in hopes of drawing uh what's it called heal the following turn but yeah So let's see what we get. Quick slash again. Okay.
No! Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Well, that was a mistake. I thought that, that was my buffed quick slash, but obviously it's not. So that was a genuine mistake. Always make sure you're picking the right cards. <laughs> oh, gosh. That was silly. That was silly. Alright, so we have the heal. Um, this is kind of an ugly turn, I, I gotta say. Because, yeah, I had thought that you just advance, uh, but <laughs> obviously you don't. So, yeah. We're going to heal magic because she's vulnerable. Okay, that's fine. Okay, and then we'll do this. Boom. It's just a matter of contending with their frenzy, unfortunately, which is annoying, but it is what it is. Okay, another vulnerable. Good. <laughs> so annoying. There. <laughs> There's one. And let's see if we can just set up cards to kill this guy next turn, maybe. Maybe, kinda, sorta. That works. My bad. I would have played the second turn differently. That's okay. It's all good. It's all good. Get some big damage going here. Looks like this is the way to do it. And then what we'll do is we'll knock him back into the... Whatever this is called. Explosion. Again, partially playing around Frenzy. So now no one's in this AoE. But because magic has vulnerability, if I pass here then she is good to go and I don't have to worry about it even though it is relatively inefficient let's just check our damage just in case yeah no not quite There we go. <laughs> that works. 
So again, we'll just manipulate the hand a little bit. Uh, I'd like to play heal here, but what I don't want to have happen is him shoot somebody and get us even lower than we already are. So let's just look for a decent hand. I don't really want this. Mm, yeah, okay, this is fine. Bang. So a little slow, but it is what it is. So kind of like the first Venom fight, um, you want to sort of commit to a side and then see if you can use your whips to get him to the other side. It depends entirely on what you get. Um, he will almost always spawn directly in the middle, but not always. In this case, he is. And so this barrel is very conveniently placed, as you can see. And we have this one right here. So th this one's a little bit of a gimme start. You probably already know where this is going. There's not really much to, to, not really much that would shock you, I'm sure. So let's start by, start with a quick kick. Blam. Awesome. Gather's not going to do much for us here. See if we can grab a Limbo Portal. That would honestly be best case scenario. Um, now, I don't believe that the... Oops. I don't believe that my Quick Slash is going to reach this. However, uh, let's give it a quick peek since we don't need the move for really anything, to be honest. Yeah, not quite. And that's okay. Let's dump slash. Quick kick again. Okay. Um, so instead what we'll do is we'll use this move momentum and we'll just go and use it over here. Okay. We're going to heal magic because she is slightly more important. If, say, Spider-Man was to get hit or whatever. And then we'll flip Venom because, you know, it eats the first one. We can't quite get him into a stun box, so instead we'll use the thwip. And then it also does remove, or it does also remove the symbiote skin as well, even though it doesn't do damage. Um, so do keep that in mind. I'm not want to use the stun box, obviously. Um, so let's use Quick Slash as it already has base damage, so we don't have to use either of these environmentals. You are too weak for this now again, like last time, it is possible that he breaks the bind, picks up Hunter, and yeets her over here. But we're going to play with fire a little bit and hope that he doesn't. Because I'd rather he attacks Hunter than Spider-Man. Which is why we used Hunter as opposed to Spider-Man. Because if Spider-Man used Quick Kick on the explosives, Spider-Man's closer to stun, which means Venom would be more inclined to pick up Spider-Man and throw him into the stun. See where I'm going with this? So if I used Hunter, if he's going to yeet anybody, I would rather it be her. That's my point. Alright, so Fury. This is a good Fury turn. To be honest. Oh wow. <laughs> That's funny. So we'll Fury Venom and then we'll use the move to get out, obviously. Uh, we'll see if we draw a heal first, though, because I'd like to use that if I do. If I don't, all good. Ah, see? There we go. Walk in the light. Oh wait, no, I can't walk out after using Fury. I don't think. It's at final action? Yeah, it cannot act. So never mind, we can't use final this or Fury this turn, excuse me.
I misremembered what the card does. Kind of sucks. It means we don't have a great uh, we don't have a great line here in terms of play unless we can get him into the stun box. I mean that's best case scenario, and I would say that it is possible. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Because then what we'll do is we'll push him into the stun box or we'll fury and then push him into the stun box if we get that angle. But I don't think we did. So we could always use quick soul slash to line that up instead. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what we're going to do. Okay, that was pretty cool. okay. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so. Fury, look at all this damage. Such a sick animation, too. So this is an example of just order of operations, right? So initially my mind was, oh, let's use Fury and get the vulnerability right but then i realized oh it's final so i can't move out of the aoe and then i realized oh i can just set it up with magic so that was the, that's a great example of a play that just sort of com comes to me as i'm working through things and so that was great that was optimal it was perfect Rude. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Well, that's not very good at all. Um, but it makes sense because I've been re rolling the chain strikes and limbos the entire time. So eh, it checks out. But one limbo portal is great. So let's keep the one. There's the upgraded one. Um, we are going to move. Yeah, it is sick. <laughs> okay, symbiote skin, no problem. No problem. So we'll to cancel the symbiote skin, we will again stun him. We might be able to kill him this turn. Oh never mind, I don't have any more redraws. So yeah, we'll just stun him. Buzz. There we go. Now that was something. Forty nine, ten, twenty four, thirty four, forty four. Oof, we are five damage short. Five damage short. Sucks to suck, I guess. Well, that wasn't very nice. More of them are joining the fight. Okay, cool. So the turns really just play themselves at this point. There's not much to say here, um, to be honest. So we're just going to use our quicks to rip through our hand as much as we can, and then we will use our um, what you call them, our redraws, and see if we can pull some buff cards or skill cards. There we go. Yeah, like that. Would 
Okay. And I don't really want Chain Strike, so let's dump that. Sure, that's fine. And then we'll, we'll put Magic about here. Just so she's in a position to knock him back into the wall or whatever. Okay, so those guys are pretty spread out, which is a little annoying, but it's okay. Not the end of the world. Okay, we'll top up Spider-Man. Now let's use... I should have used the hero combo first. That's a little bit of a inefficiency by me, but that's okay. Um... Yeah, we'll just use it to get the combo out of the deck. And we have tons of heroism to spare. But honestly, I have so much hero heroism, it didn't matter to me that I used something before. It's all good, to be honest. Hmm. Okay. So now what we're looking for is... That works. I was going to say, we're looking for a way to maybe deal with both these guys. Um, but this is here, which is great. So we'll just use that and then <clears throat> kind of go from there. Okay. Note that we still have two moves. So we use one. And then number two. And then number three. I'm going for it. So now the name of the game is, to, now that the stun boxes are gone, is to just give him one move, uh, or one action rather, per turn, and then you go from there. And I shouldn't have used the move like that. I should have used these boxes first. All good. Now, if you had your Thwip upgraded, he would take 15 damage from those each, but I do not, so it's only 10. So now it's just healing and sustaining as you need. It's CCing him when you can with Thwip and doing damage with things like Fury when you have it. And really, like that's, that's all there is to this mission once you kind of get the ball rolling and you down him once. Um, that's really all there is to it. So, we'll use our Fury. Fly vulnerable. We have Thwip if we need it, if he goes Symbiote. Okay, no problem. And because... So, because the Hunter went final too, just like when they're CC'd, you're very unlikely to draw into Hunter cards. This is also important to, to recognize. <laughs> hmm. A little bit of a bummer if I can't kill him this turn. Let's see. Okay, that's 47. And 28. Okay, great. Yep. There we go. There you go. Hi, Magic. What you got for us, Nico? Okay, so 5 Hunter Offense versus 10 Hunter Offense and minus 10 Hunter Health. I hope that this is obvious which choice is the best one. Oh my gosh, my nose.
But in case you don't know, the minus 10 offense and, or sorry, plus 10 offense, minus 10 health is the best choice. Reason being is if you think about damage numbers, especially on higher difficulties, 10 health is completely inconsequential, uh, completely useless. 10 block is completely useless. And willpower and um, fortitude don't even equate to, you know, this much health. Whereas the 10 offense is much better because the 10 offense will inevitably be better scaling. Um, it'll it'll go with you. It makes everything you do, you know, 100% stronger than this one. Uh, and the 10 health is just so inconsequential that you should always be taking this one. Always. Okay, we have shove. Huzzah. Hey, Hunter. Uh, no peeking now. All right, so because we got Iron Man Mark Target upgrade, uh, that's really all we need for the cap mission, like that alone, and then the quick blast upgrade. Those two things, we don't need anything else for Iron Man uh, for a while, and then. Who do we just use? Magic, Spider-Man, Hunter. Spider-Man just needs a little bit of love for Act 1, but then you never need to use him again, which is what we're going to do on this run. We're not going to touch him again <laughs> after Act 1. So I'm only going to try to use the bare minimum you need on Spider-Man to get by. Which is, you want to upgrade Spider-Sense, and you want to um, see if you can acquire either a Special Delivery or Opportunist, preferably Opportunist. And then, yeah, but these are all whites, which is no bueno. Wild Strike, okay, incredible. So, wow, okay. <laughs> so we picked up a Wild Strike and these three. Upgrading Quick Kick is actually quite good because it gains a base damage coefficient. So it becomes the equivalent of, say, um... Hunter's Quick Slash. The only issue is it's if the target was damaged, so not that high value. Uh, gather, we're not going to use two gathers, so we'll just take one of the deck and upgrade with it anyway, so I don't need this at all. And Limbo Portal, same thing, unfortunately, so uh, what we're going to do here is we're just quite simply going to take one of these more for the essence than anything and i know as of this moment my essences are all quite balanced and so skills tends to be the one that i personally lack the most so we're going to do this and then we're just going to disenchant the limbo portal Always a pleasure. but not only do we have fury we now pulled a wild strike which is insane it's very very good so let's upgrade a slash because regular knockback on slash is pretty ho-hum but a forceful knockback on slash is very significant Okay, nice. So we have two artifact options, which is good because uh, you need, in the speed run, you need um, research level 10. Well, you need research level 10 in any run uh, to beat the game. And so in a speed run where there's only 18 side missions, you do 17 or 18. I'm pretty sure it's 18. You have to run half of your side missions as artifact missions if you go by that, that numeric metric. Now... So searching for artifacts all the time is priority number one. Priority number two would be um, credits, because we're usually pretty credit starved early on. But once you get the shove upgrades and the foundry upgrades, you don't need credits at all. Those are the only upgrades you use in the run. So credits is like, eh, it's up there. Uh, Intel caches, just ignore them, never do them. It's not worth it. And yeah, so these are all commons. There's no rare coils either, which kind of sucks. Um, so now I'm thinking, okay, artifact, okay, there's no rare coils, okay, what characters do I want to upgrade, which ones do I want to make better, which missions are going to be uh, relatively easier or harder to one another, if that matters. So in this case, we have a stop Hydra helicopter with Strange, we have a capture Hydra agent with Spider-Man, this one's very synergetic. 
Um, up or no. Destroy device with Ghost Rider is quite easy, uh, but it, that's a credit mission. And then protect Hydra device is just quite difficult at this stage in the game in general. Uh, so we're not going to do that one. So it'll be one of these two. The differences are you need Strange for, I think, only two more missions now for the whole game. Whereas Spider-Man you need for at least three more at this point on. But Spider-Man kind of needs a bunch of upgrades or no upgrades. And like I said, he kind of wants those rares like Opportunist and Special Delivery. So a Gamma Coil Common does not really help us with Spider-Man whatsoever. Whereas it does help with Strange because... Upgrading Winds of Watum is super high priority. Um, upgrading Agamotto's Gaze is really, really helpful, and upgrading Axe just amps the damage quite significantly. And then, if you happen to pull a blue Strange card, you're hopefully not getting both the Belthok. And that, yeah, that's the hope. <laughs> if you do pull a Crimson Bands, or what's the other one? Um, Astral Meditation, if you use combat items, that's good, but I don't, so that card's no good. So these are the things I think about, right? It's like, who is the highest value target? Who... I don't really... So, like, Artifact is number one, but other than that, and then the coil quality, it's like, who benefits more from this particular mission? Um, Ghost Rider, Common Coil, pretty good choice. Why? Because all of his common cards are amazing, save for Drain Soul. So if we pulled, you know, if we do destroy device for credits with Ghost Rider and we get like a Lash Plus, a Hell, Hell Ride upgrade, or, or, yeah, one of those two, really awesome. The issue is we need, we only have one research going on right now. And so if we don't get an artifact, then we're wasting a turn with no research. And you do not want to go with no research on deck uh, in this type of a run. So, full circle, these are the only two options. Strange benefits a little bit from this coil. Um, Spider-Man does not benefit at all from this coil, even though his mission will be marginally easier. Uh, so for that, uh, we will do the stop the Hydra helicopter. Now... Unless there's a Fallen Reinforcement, we're not going to run Hunter. So at this stage in the game, it's okay. Who do I want to run that uses, uh, you know, who, who can use good commons? Who am I going to run with that maybe needs a bit of love for their story mission? Who do you want to run that maybe you struggle with a little bit more, etc. Right? So we know that the Captain America mission is coming up soon. It's in three missions from now. We know that the... I think, right? Oh no, it's the Wolverine mission, my apologies. So the Wolverine mission is in three missions, and then the cap after that, so five. My apologies. Um, a Wolverine and a Hunter vs. Sabretooth is a non-issue, honestly, so we don't really need to change any of this. The only nice thing would be to upgrade one chain swipes, because um, if you do that, then you get access to weaken. And so that can be super helpful if you just either get another chain swipes or get another card that can replace one of these. Um, so you can upgrade the one. Iron Man, like I said, we already got a few upgrades, so we are we are set and ready to go for the cap mission. Honestly, we don't need anything else up here. Captain America has a pretty good deck, and so I would like to cut the punches, but if we're upgrading commons, all of his commons are pretty good. Uh, so upgrading any of them is a blessing, right? Quick punch, tactician, shield bounce, it's all good. It's all good to upgrade. Um, and because he's on deck next, and Iron Man's already ready to go, and we are, like we said, Ghost Rider's a pretty good pick, right? You can kind of see where I'm going with this. So the idea here is we don't want to invest any time into spider-man unless absolutely required okay and realistically for all the missions you need him you can get away with just use be him being like a thwip quick bot a quick thwip bot <laughs> um so he can be a minion manager and then a hard cc and that's it like that's all he does right he doesn't do a lot of damage so chain strike is just a dead card um so you can just use quick kick spider sense thwip and you can get by so the Hulk we never use, 
And Nico, we don't need till a little later, and we did already get one card for her. Scarlet Witch, we only use once, and we'll talk about that when we get there. Marvel, we're going to stop using after... I think we only... Yeah, we only use her two more times. The bill comes due, and then Shattering Expectations, and that's it. Those are the only two missions we use her on going forward. So, yeah, the best common upgrades for the most immediate solution with Doctor Strange and stopping the Hydra helicopter is going to be Cap and Ghost Rider. Who puts that much effort into the pre-mission screen? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> But those are the things I think about when I'm choosing my side missions. I just don't usually do it. I don't take that long to decide. <laughs> um, but if there is a Fallen Reinforcement, we'll pull out uh, Ghost Rider <laughs> and put in Hunter. Yeah. Yeah, in a speedrun, you got to think about these things. You got to think about how far ahead in advance. How many times do you use a character? When do you stop using a character? How necessary is it? Blah, 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 blah. Who benefits from upgraded common cards? And Cap most certainly does. Like, if we get a shield bounce upgrade, oof, that's the sauce. We can't allow that helicopter to escape. Do whatever it takes to stop it before it departs. All right. So we are encountering our first guardian. Oh, weak point. Oh, delay. Okay, that's fantastic. Those two cards are two of the two of the best objective cards. Ghost Rider's buff that we got, I didn't even check it. It ended up being um, fast or quick thinking, which is probably one of the worst ones. However, for Ghost Rider specifically, it's actually not bad because Hellride is so expensive and Drain Soul costs, like you can see right there on my screen, with fast. Drain Soul costs zero. So this is actually a very niche interaction. So if you happen to have Nico and Ghost Rider on the same team, it's not the worst thing to use the fast blood for blood upgrade on Ghost Rider. And then you can actually use Drain Soul. I know, crazy, right? So... We have a Guardian, we have an Officer, a lot of people are targeting Ghost Rider, this is not good. Uh, we might end up taking a death here, uh, as we don't have Straight to Hell, but that's okay. And it is what it is. All right, let's dump Vashanti. Nice. Sand is getting a little expensive already, though. Uh, that's the only issue. So we have... Okay, cool. That can target both of them. <coughs> this doesn't help us until we need it. Oh, <laughs> no shit. Um... <laughs> we do have this stun box, but alas, no way to push him into it. Lamppost isn't the worst. But yeah, Drain Soul costing zero is good. It's very tempting for me to use that right now because... Yeah, normally it's actually quite difficult to get value off of this card. So... Yeah, it's one of the rare times where I'm going to use it. Because the sooner I use it and the more I start stacking it up, right? So now one more kill and he gets his passive and we get another one, right? So, okay, <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, someone's gonna die this turn. It might be Ghost Rider, and there's 
very little I can do about that given my hand right now without either Cap or Ghost Rider dying. And I really don't care if Ghost Rider dies because we're not going to use him until like a while. <laughs> so he can just vibe out. It doesn't really matter that much. Now, if only this bot or this unit was over here, then we could just push him in. But obviously this is not the case. So instead... All right, so we can at least taunt the wolves off of him uh, with Cap, and like that's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. But then that only leaves us with either, or it only leaves us the Blessing of the Vashanti. So we have to play Blessing of the Vashanti. Let's do that. Yeah, this hand is very limited because of all the heroics we drew, which is very unfortunate, actually. But what can you do, right? Okay, so I'm thinking we just weaken one of the dogs and then we can kill this one with this or maybe, maybe, let's see, this is 20, 20 plus 72, 92, 99, yeah, not quite, not quite enough. All right. Yeah, so unfortunate, but that's okay. We'll just let Ghost Rider be the sacrificial lamb. We'll see how that goes. Otherwise, taunting the wolves was correct. Um, I'm. We'll see. Now, the issue without running hunter, yeah, yeah, without running a hunter in the early game is a lack of healing, and you're gonna notice that that is a big problem. Just in general. Yeah, like, we got really unlucky. Like, every unit in the lobby was targeting Ghost Rider off the rip. So we may have to run it back. Just because, like, the... Yeah. A lot of the... The deck was stacked against us. Uh, for <laughs> for this one, is, is what I'm trying to say. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So. Let's give it a go. See what we get. Perfect. The quick punch was the only. Uh... Yeah. Hope they're ready. Now the dream would be we draw a tactician, or we rather we redraw into a tactician, excuse me. Nope. Okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Now alas, we don't have shield bounce upgraded. Yeah, this is quite this is quite uh challenging, that's for sure. Um Very high value though, so we'll make that play. And then we take Captain America, and we do... Doesn't quite re reach the dog, so I might have to use my move. Which is not what I wanted to do. But is what it is. Two, one, one... Thirty plus twenty-six. Yeah, okay, so we can destroy the wolf at least. Uh, if we want to do that. Well, let's see. Let's see how much we can do this way first. Oh yeah, not even yeah. Okay. Okay, so we'll use the vault here. Watch my back. 
And since since the wolf is doing more damage than what Tactician would block, this is technically more efficient. Um, likewise, it is possible that weakening the officer is also more efficient, technically, but I would rather just get the wolf off the table. The issue we're going to run into, once again, is just a severe lack of healing. In the first couple missions, pretty much up until the second Venom fight onwards, you really want some form of healing on your team. Uh, and you can really feel it's quite challenging to not have, at least on New Game Plus. We are really low rolling on this mission, unfortunately. Okay, we used um, Agamotto's, so we can get away with uh, uh, using the delay card there. Should have played Tactician before redrawing the objective card, but yeah, it is what it is. Is what it is. Okay, and now two card plays. So we have punch and shield. Uh, yeah, punch and shield bounce. We also, oh, I, <laughs> yeah, we also have shove as well. So what I'm thinking is, if I can sort of like, <laughs> if I can loop de loop this guy around or or push him like in front of a stun crate or something, that would be pretty effective, I would say. Yeah, okay. Let's uh, maybe mess around with that idea a little bit. So we have to get this unit. Ah, it's not going to work. Okay, so let's do it this way instead then. So we're going to go strange. We're going to play a little game of RNG. And if it doesn't work, then I'm just going to reload the mission because for the lulls, for the memes. All right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. We have two chances. 50%. <laughs> Fifty four percent. Not looking good here. Hey, all right. Drained it. Who says an old dog <laughs> can't learn new tricks? All right. Fantastic. I'm not even going to use the one card play because I, I don't gain anything from that. I don't I don't want to get rid of either of these cards. I'd like to get rid of this one, but I can't. And I want Strange to take the hit here because uh, just to try to equalize the damage a little bit. So now there will just be minion object or objectives, excuse me, minion reinforcements, if any reinforcements, which there are none. Fantastic.
So now it's kind of about being a little more aggressive, doing a little more damage. Uh, and Blessing of the Vashanti is not going to be the way to do that. Yikes. Yeah, these two fellas don't have a lot of damage, unfortunately. That that At this point, that's going to be what kills us, is the severe lack of damage. Yeah, because I can't even break his shield this turn, unfortunately. Here we go. This won't end well so the only hope is that we pretty much somehow draw into enough damage next turn to deal with it. Even though we got lucky, it may not be enough. Yeah, no Axe of Angerumus, unfortunately. Just constantly drawing all the cap cards for no reason at all. Yeah. Yeah. That is so unfortunate. Unfortunate. Well, it'd be like that sometimes. I just did not have the damage with those two characters, unfortunately. That's all that was. All good. We'll run it back. Our opening hand was very clunky, a lot of heroics. Um, which, again, there's nothing you can really do about it. A lot of characters have like a like a 3-3-2 three, three, breakdown on their opening deck, usually. Um, but in the case of... What's his name? Ghost Rider, it's a 3, or 2-2-3. Two, two, three. So I ended up having 7 heroics in my deck. So, all good. It happens. Every unit targeting Ghost Rider was the biggest issue, for sure. And then I could have taunted the wolves, yes. Would that have mattered in the end? Possibly. But I didn't have any healing anyway, so... Really what we need to draw is a way to use Hellride to get a bunch of the units down... ...first. And then, again, hopefully have them not all target the same person. So we'll give it another go. Otherwise, I just may not have enough damage or healing on this team. Which is what it is. And so I would make some slight adjustments. Alright, so we're on this side this time. Or were we always on this side? I don't remember. Okay, cool. So yeah, there we go. There's a Hellride in hand already. So that's great. Much better start. Now, yeah, and the aggro is a bit more dispersed. So this is not a bricky hand. This is a playable situation. That last one, that was pretty that was a pretty stacked deck, I got to say. That was that was rough. <laughs> that was rough. Okay. So, first things first before we do anything, let's establish our uh, let's establish our hell ride uh, what you call it? Our hell ride angle <laughs> words. 
our hell rat angle. So we'd like to get these two doggos. We'd like to get... I mean, the dream would be these four right here. One, two, three, four. Now, I do have Lash in hand, so it is possible that we could move this guy over here by doing something like that, right? So that that's really tempting. That's a good play. It also weakens them both, so the Hell Ride damages them both. Then, with Ghost Rider, whoops, with Ghost Rider, we can... Oh, just kidding. He's a hair too far. That's a bummer. No problem. So, let's do... Let's redraw Punch. We don't want that. <laughs> Let's redraw that. We don't want that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's not super helpful now, is it? No problem. So, the question is, how can we use our Quicks to great effect? Let's start with Tactician. There we are. Okay. Beauty. And Hellride is only costing two. Yeah. We have Winds and Quick, which means we can do Axe and Hell. Yeah, okay. So, let's do it like so. Oh no, but I wanted to use Lash as well. That's right. That's right. Let's do that first, just so I don't accidentally uh, make a mistake. And then this way we can also see our lineup a little better as well. Okay, lovely. We actually hit all four of them from here, so we don't even have to use our shove, which is great. Which means we get to use our shove for uh, boop, as I call it. So we'll quick here because we don't quite have the angle and he, yeah, he's not in the box. A one card play. Okay. And then we have our boop. Boop. So we don't quite have a boop angle there. Unfortunate, unfortunate. Uh, no problem. I don't want to boop here because it's going to put him off axis. Do, do, do. All right, let's see. Where does Strange go for this? Does it show me? There. Yeah, that's that's playable. That's that is Yep. This won't end well for you. Okay. Ooh, okay. Yeah, we don't quite have the angle. Uh, but that's okay, because it does put Strange in a position to hit this one. Uh, then we'll just go like this. And like this. Uh huh. And then like this. Oh, we still have Winds of Watoom. That's fine. Uh, genuine oversight. I didn't see that. That's okay. We'll keep it for next turn. Awesome. So that that turn again kind of played itself a little bit, and that's fine. Honestly, that's more in line with what I was looking for when I brought Ghost Rider in the first place. Because he's very good at dealing with, like, the helicopter and stuff. I'm going to throw the box at the Hydra, or, excuse me, the Guardian, because his shield is determined off his max health. So even if it's just a, a, a few points of damage, it does add up. Like, eventually. No 
Ghost Rider still might be down. <laughs> okay, no. We're good. I'm surprised the Guardian... Uh... Oh, that's right. We threw the box with Strange. That's right. Okay, that's really good for us, actually. That's, like, really good for us, actually. Yeah, we are high rolling on this restart. Holy. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah, because look at that. Okay. Keep it up. Okay. Let's get... We'll keep Hellmouth because it is a... Uh, if you look here, it's a way of getting him out of the circle. So we may want to do that. Uh, we'll dump Vashanti. Okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. This does get strange out of the circle, so we'll do that. Let's try this. Bye. Smell you later. <laughs> All right. Um, I'd like a way to push him in, which means yeah, Hellmouth out. We have quick punch in hand. Yes, we do. But we're gonna shove him first with where is he here cap now if i shove into him the explosion will not go off that's an important distinction so instead we'll shove him into the i guess yeah the stun box for damage purposes he will still take uh he might still take an action depending on how the game i'm not actually sure how this interaction works because i know this happens first but he may still take an action honestly i don't know uh, honestly, I don't know. So, we'll quick clean up there. So, quick punch, Winds of Watum. Winds of Watum did double duty. It took Strange out of the circle. It did killed one of the wolves. We were able to boop the officer in. Ghost Rider is vulnerable, and he has this dude's aggro, which is not good. However, we have three card plays, and so what we can try to do is... We can like try to manipulate that a little bit. Like we can use shield bounce, just for example, um, to to draw the aggro off of him. That is most likely my play, and then we'll do Hellmouth out here, and then Agamotto's gaze, just to get the card place. Even though he is wounded, yeah, that's pretty risque, but whatever. Um, now the the Ah, I was hoping that I could do this without getting that minion, but it looks like there's nothing I can do about that. So, shield bounce here. I think. Well, okay, let's do Hellmouth first just to get our boy out, and then we'll go from there, yeah? Your fate. Hmm. Watch and, learn. and we'll play Agamotto just to have the four card plays the following turn. And then we will shield bounce just this guy so he doesn't attack Ghost Rider. There we go. Beauty. Okay, cool. So we have a Winds of Watum, so we can maybe get both those guys. It'll either be the tip of the range, or we won't reach them. And then... Okay, he does still take his action. That is unfortunate. Okay. That's okay. Strange did his job. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, perfect. So, 
We have a quick, we have a lash, we have, so let's use the quick over here. We have a boop as well. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. And then we have a lash. We have drain souls. Drain soul is quite a tempting prospect, I gotta say. Reason being is that there's two in my hand and I have a ton of heroism, so now would be the time to use them. 23 damage. This does put us a little low, but is what it is. So we could do this. Yeah. This sets us up for success. We will actually just use our boop. Uh, well, I guess we'll use a quick punch first. Yeah. Just to thin the hand a little bit. I could have quick punched that guy, I guess, but that's fine. It wasn't the plan anyway. I want to use Drain Soul on him. Alright. And because we're going to use Shield Bounce, we don't actually have to commit uh, to killing this unit. Actually, now that I see it. Okay. Bang. Two card plays, eight heroism, drain soul. So we go one, two. Well, we only have to break his guard, actually. So let's go one, two, three on the helicopter. Ah, oh, can't life steal the helicopter. That's right. <laughs> Inorganic. Duh. That's fine. We're taunting anyway. Whoopsies. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be able to win next turn. So there we go. So yeah, like I said, the early, the first attempt was just like the hand was really, really bad. And then the aggro all being on Ghost Rider was really, really bad. Especially since he was the whole focal point. Like, he was the reason why we were going to win this mission in the first place. Right? So. Which one of you wants to go first? The helicopter's about to leave. Time is running out. Stop that helicopter. Yes, yes, yes. I am aware. <laughs> A knuckle sandwich. Hey, okay. Drain Soul, Tactician, Hellride, win the game. Again, remember to optimize your card plays, optimize your turns. Optimize for XP, that is. And just out of good habit, I'll re-roll. And for the memes, we'll boop. Oh, never mind. It kills the hell. Well, yeah. Just for the memes, let's boop. <laughs> oh, the 1 HP. Look at that. It's very necessary. I don't want to hear this slander that it's not. Okay. <laughs> All right, and there we go. Sacrificial Doctor Strange, the real MVP. He gave us two turns of Agamotto's gaze. It's true. It's true. Okay, so the coils. Oh, yes. Um, start our artifact. Always make sure you do your artifact before your research. It's not entirely... There we go. We'll get the one, two. Yeah, 
Good old one two. That's how you boop into allies. We'll get started right away. We're not using the item bench because we don't use items. What we're hoping for is either Lash, Hellride, or Straight to Hell. And then... Okay, yeah, no blues. So there's Lash. Quick Punch is good too, actually. Yep, X of Angurumus, it's good. Uh, Hellride, okay, there we are. So Lash and Hellride are the first things that jump out at me as the ones I should be taking. But... E... How long did you say you were exposed to this thing? Eh, it's probably fine. I think you could make an argument for any of these, given that this becomes draw a card. However, on the cap mission, because it's Iron Man, don't really need it. Because you already have so many ways of dealing quicks and stuff. Uh, Axe of Angarumas. I don't usually run two copies of Axe, so eventually I'm going to pull one out and upgrade it. So it's less efficient for me to go Axe of Angarumas now. Whereas Lash and Hellride, I keep both copies, so I need upgraded copies. So if I go with these, then I'll never need to blueprint them or find them again, uh, which is big value. And then I don't even need to upgrade him right now because, again, we're not really going to use him for a while. And then if I take these, technically the only cards I need, need would be a single copy of Straight to Hell and then Ghost Rider is done for the run, technically. So, I think this, for the long term, is just a very high value coil to take those two, and then um, upgrade them both. One Lash and one Hellride. Hey, can I ask ah, okay, so once again, uh, this should be obvious. <laughs> so, Scarlet Witch's commons are awful, other than Hex Charge. And 5 Hunter Offense scales indefinitely. So 5 Hunter Offense and 3 Dark Balance is the way to go. This should be a gi uh, given. Thanks, Hunter. You're welcome. Okay, friends. Well, that'll do it for this one. Um, hope you enjoyed the stream and the video in this case. Uh, the video, if you're watching, it was spliced all together. Uh, you didn't see the whole stream. If you're interested in the whole streams, pop by sometime or the whole VOD is on my Twitch as well. And to Twitch chat and YouTube, both you guys, thanks for your support. I hope you enjoy the content. And uh, that's it for first episode of Let's Play. We got up to the Bill Comes Due from the very beginning, and we are ready to go. So the beginning of the next episode will be the Bill Comes Due. Uh, if you're on YouTube, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. If you find this interesting or helpful, uh, great. I'm glad. And... Um, if you ever have any questions post them there if you're in twitch thanks for watching guys and as always if you ever have questions uh, you're welcome to, to post them in chat anytime ask me in discord tweet me whatever you want but to everybody have a good rest of your day evening wherever you are whatever you're doing and i will catch you guys later